Well, I think this part of the season, you have to be able to respond quickly. And after the game at uh, Maryland on Wednesday night, uh, we better have responded because it was possibly, uh, you know, our, our uh, the outing that I think we look back and say was a shell of our team. And you have to credit Maryland for a lot of things, but I think we allowed their ranking uh, and the banners and the name across their chest to be more of the opponent than actually any of the five players on the floor. So uh, I was really proud with how we responded, not just with the win on Rutgers, uh, win over Rutgers on Saturday, but how we responded in practice on Thursday and Friday. From a competitive standpoint, uh, as I've mentioned before, it was a very, very physical practice on Thursday. Uh, and I think that part of you know, that wasn't our best offensive performance, shooting the ball or taking care of the ball on Saturday, I thought our defense was really, really good. Um, and anytime you hold somebody to two points in one quarter and have multiple quarters of uh, under double figures, uh, you're going to put yourself in a position uh, to be successful. So we're trying to build off that. We have an opportunity now with the two regular season games and the start of the Big Ten tournament uh, to look not only at those opportunities, but the opportunities in practice each and every day for us to do what has been our number one goal from the start, and that, that is to continue to get our foundation and our culture built and continuing as, as individuals and as a team uh, to move forward and get better. Jonathan, how has uh, Aviana Young kind of progressed as the season gone along? I think there's probably been a couple of ups and downs there, but uh, she certainly seems to be playing pretty well here at the most important time. Yeah, I think what you want to see from a senior. You know, there's, a, there's a sense of urgency. Uh, you know, at, at times on Saturday um, was maybe the best defensively she's played all year. Uh, I, I think watching her grow, knowing uh, some, some things that happened in December from, from a team standpoint, a culture standpoint, were, were not what we wanted. And you hope somebody can learn from that. And that was the biggest part uh, of, of the reinstatement. And, and I think that part of still trying to figure that part out when she came back. And uh, I think with any senior I've ever had the chance to coach, you know, on the men's side, women's side, as an assistant, a head coach, you just hope they're, that they're playing with that sense of urgency and, and, and hopefully playing their best basketball of their career. And I think when you look back at the last three or four games, just that part of uh, Avi's always been somebody who's been very, very competitive. And, and I think that part of trying to do things, she's been competitive, and in time she's let the game come to her a little bit more. Uh, she had a stretch to start the game on Saturday. I, th I think she was trying to do too much. And I think if there's something in that part, she wants things so badly. But I think to be able to see her uh, defensively on Saturday, also to be able to go and Diane can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, six for six to end the game from the line. She ended up eight for 11. Um, it, you, that's what you hopefully are having, especially when you're coming here to, you know, now she has one more time on the Cole Center floor, is that's the part of leaving her legacy. And, and she has done that not just in the games, but in practice, put us in positions where I feel like she has taken her own individual uh, wants and needs and, and really put what our team needs from her ahead of everything else. And that's what you hope a senior does from a maturity standpoint at the end of their career. You mentioned the foundation and the culture. How have you seen it grow in the however long you've been here now? Yeah, I, I think with that, like anything, the consistency part of things, there, there's still, uh, you know, Maryland it was one of those times where you're taking steps back and you're hoping that all of a sudden the next time you get that opportunity, you don't react in the same way. And, and I think um, understanding in February when you're not trying to practice for two and a half hours and things like that, you want your players' legs to be the most important part and, and getting locked in. And um, I think there have definitely been highs and lows throughout the season from a culture standpoint, just like a wins and losses standpoint. Um, I refuse to, you know, anybody wants to say, well, this isn't the season that you imagined to our team. Well, we've never focused on a certain amount of wins, a certain amount of, you know, uh, you know, trying to win X amount of games on the road or home in the Big Ten. It, it's it's been the building block, and and I think that part of, if we can continue to do that, and you have teams right now across America who have gotten to this point in the season, they know postseason is, you know, pretty much just based if they win their conference tournament. Uh, we understand that part, and we're we're not looking at that. We're looking at how can we get better. 
I, I think, from a culture standpoint so that we do the same things that we did in, in the Nebraska game, the Michigan game. Um, we don't do the things in the Maryland game where we're in awe. And I think that's very easy in our league to do. Um, but I'm proud of that part of I think there's an excitement still when the kids come to practice uh, of still knowing that, that we can get better. And I think that's where you're trying to judge the culture and seeing programs where the kids are just, they've got a date on their calendar circled that they just want this over. And I keep talking about whether it's three games for sure, um, that's all Aviana and Taylor Kuhn have. And, and really I think that part of our culture is, you know, there are 13 other kids because Mikey Crawl has those same amount of games left even though she can't play. As you look at that and say, if nothing else, you need to put everything you, in, you have into this for those three individuals on our team. Um, Ms. Kuhn is kind of an interesting story, isn't she? Could you explain uh, just her whole, you know, getting here and what she's been able to provide to your program? Well, added as a walk-on, you know, at the end of your, you know, fourth, you know, I guess in the middle of your fourth year in school and, and not knowing really what's going to happen once there's a coaching change. Um, she's, she's a great example of everything you want a Wisconsin student athlete to be. And, you know, she, she's a Wisconsin native. You know, she, she was the first one after I met the team last year who stuck around, came up, and, and told me kind of what her – her vision was for for her experience here at Wisconsin, and you know at, at that point, uh, I'll be honest. Like with her and Lexi Richardson, I didn't know anything about them. They weren't on the roster at that point because they'd been added late um, on the original roster that I had been given. And I think that part of watching her do everything that you ask for a member of your team, be a great individual student, um, have a vision of what she wants to be. Uh, it's changed a little bit, and I, and I like that part with our student athletes to understand that's going to change in their college career. Uh, somebody that took full, um, uh, it w was able to maximize um, an opportunity to start when we were struggling in December with getting the best effort um, and, and really bought in with our energy rating and that part of things that not, not a lot of walk-ons get. And understanding when we made that decision to go back once we started conference play um, with a couple of the freshmen, uh, never missed a beat. She's somebody that she has to take a class right now that she can't be in practice certain days. Um, there's not a minute of practice that she doesn't watch or gets extra workouts in. And, and I think just being able to see that, um, my hope is she sees just like many of our our football walk-ons, many of our men's basketball walk-ons, I think you always highlight the ones who end up making it to that level and contribute on the field. I think Taylor Kuhn has set a great example of what we hope walk-ons will be here for a long time with Wisconsin women's basketball. You talked uh, Saturday about the team's defense, the ability to switch back and forth between zone and man and even the full court press. How has that developed during the season? Well, I, we felt like for a long time the zone gave us the best chance to be successful. And, and I think as we looked at uh, some some situations, uh, kind of the second half through the conference, um, that for the long term, I, I, I would like to play more man-to-man. -man. I don't think I've ever shied away from that's my wanting. Um, but, but our ability to have success in the Nebraska and the Michigan game, I think afforded us the opportunity to look and say, against a specific opponent, if, if, if both are going to be effective, how can we make them most effective? And whether it's switching on makes and misses, whether it's dead balls, different times in the game, um, I think the maturity of the team, that was the great part about Saturday, is there were moments where Rutgers had had success against the man um, that we went to the zone, and we weren't afraid to go back to the man-to-man, -to, -man, to have a little bit short-term memory with our team. Um, and that buy-in of things. And I hope that not only has that set the table for us in the next three-plus games, but leading into next year that we'll be able to build off of that. The other thing, the key of Saturday was free throws, especially in, in the fourth quarter. I think you only made one field goal, but you won the game on free throws. Can you just talk about that? And then especially Kayla McMorris, the way her she's been shooting. I, I think the biggest part with the free throws is the the opportunity that that we got was because of our aggressive nature, and I think that's something that we've tried to work on. It was better in the in the non-conference, 
Uh, you get in the Big Ten. We we weren't doing as good a job of getting to the line, getting to the you know the bonus in, in each quarter. Um, and, and part of that was with how we cut, how we attacked off the dribble, how we posted up, got us to that you know fifth team foul fairly quickly in the fourth quarter. Um, and, and then the second part of that is it's great to get there. You've got to be able to capitalize, and we've had struggles with that. Uh, as, and and again, I, I think that's one of those things I don't get into. A bunch of things trying to challenge our kids besides hey we, we need to shoot free throws when we're winded when they're game like as much much as possible in practice and you, you've got to be able to get in on your own to do it and you know Kayla set a great example with the 23 straight uh, I think that part of getting her back to the line wanting the ball against their pressure on, on Saturday um, she had missed a layup in the fourth quarter it was really important to me that we get her another touch in an aggressive manner uh, and, and again, Aviana Young throwing things out the window as a senior. You know, it doesn't matter what your percentage is coming in. Every single time you step up there, it's a new opportunity. And I think a great part is, is as well as we shot him on Saturday, we didn't leave a lot of points. We, you know, we didn't have a, a, anybody in our team at least made one of the two. And believe me, I'd like to go more than 50% with each of them. But I think that's important. They had that success because I think that's contagious. When you see a teammate be able to knock one down, when you get fouled, now you know it's your turn to be able to do the same thing. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan.